we have everything about to start. We'll be on Facebook, on YouTube. All right, it looks like we're back. All right, everybody, so welcome back. So we had a little technical get difficulty getting this started, but now we're here live and going and hopefully you all can hear me, you can all see me and we're all good to go. And we're gonna jump right in. Now, I did do a little welcome before and if you missed that, welcome in. This is Clay Share Con day one and we're gonna be doing some hand building plates and platters. Later today, I'll be doing some glazing with Georgie's pigments and then we're doing a big, big giveaway. Big giveaway, huge giveaway. And YouTube is up, YouTube is up, Facebook is up, ClayShare.com is up, Vimeo is up, and Instagram is up. I am broadcasting live on five platforms. We have got three cameras, one iPhone, two iPads, and two laptops running right now to make this happen for you all. If you could see the studio, it's like a film production center. It's crazy good. So everything is up. If you have any issues technically, please let us know, send us a message, put it in the comments, and we'll get to it. So, whew, that was a lot. And being day one, uh, there's always glitches, right? And this is how it, it, this is life, right? We're live. This is live broadcasting. So anyhow, we are gonna make uh, a plate. That's what we're gonna do. So if you've missed what's going on, go to claysharecon.com, right? So that's the website for just this event. That's not my website, but well, I, it is mine, but it's not the ClayShare main page website. So someone's commenting, there's no sound on ClayShare.com. Okay, so no sound on ClayShare.com. We will get to you and we'll take care of that. Some people had to log out and come back in. Try that. If you're not having sound, log out and come back in. Um, the best place to chat, I can see your comments everywhere. I have got YouTube there. I have got Instagram there. I have Facebook over there. I am not seeing the ClayShare.com or Vimeo chat. That's not mine, so I can't help you there. I would say YouTube's a good place or Facebook. Take your pick, either one. They all work, right? Okay, so I think we're just about ready to actually get into this and we will go through the steps of making a plate. Now, if you missed the beginning, I was just saying that I started ClayShareCon as a response to the cancellation of Inseca which is the largest clay conference here in America. And I go every year and I demonstrate and do tutorials and all of these vendors and suppliers and manufacturers go and they sell their products there too. And with this being canceled, it just means that a whole year's worth of um, suppliers getting their product out there wasn't gonna happen. So I wanted to find a way to bring Inseca to you all. And those of you who couldn't make it to Inseca, this is a great way to kind of be there virtually. So what I have done is all of the demos I would have been doing at Nsika and all the products I might have been checking out, um, we're gonna give away. So I'm gonna be showing you how to make some things, I'm gonna be giving away prizes, showing you how to use new products, and um, YouTube is still on. I actually have the YouTube chat up live and I'm seeing the folks on YouTube commenting Right, YouTube, you guys are there. So we're gonna talk about rolling out the slab. Mine are usually about a quarter of an inch to three eighths of an inch thickness. So because we couldn't have Inseca, we're doing this instead. And there's a bunch of other people doing similar things. So there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening over the next week or so for everybody that is you know, craving some pottery tutorials and demos. So check all that out. It's gonna be, it's, it's all over Facebook. It's all over everything. So. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do, which is one of our giveaways today, um, and please excuse my voice, I've had a cold for a few days, so my voice is not quite what it usually is. Um, so I will hopefully not strain it, right? We are gonna be giving away three, three prizes, three people are each gonna get, get to pick one of the GR Pottery Forms new template kits. And in the template kits, you'll be getting a large and a small template, which work with GR Pottery Forms stacking forms. So I'm gonna show you how to make a plate with that. And we're gonna do that first. So this is one set, you get the two forms right here. One little one and a big one. And I made with the little one, this plate yesterday. Look how cute this is. This plate is beautiful. So we're gonna make this 
And I find when I'm doing larger things, I might want to roll my slab out a little thicker. If I'm making something smaller, you roll it out thinner. And the other thing to keep in mind is if you're going to add texture to your pieces, you need your clay to be thick enough so you can do that. If your clay is really thin, you're not going to be able to put that texture in because you won't have any material for it to press into. So keep that in mind and don't have to make it too thin, just make it thick enough. So this is a little thicker than a quarter of an inch right here, but just a hair. And I can measure it. I can measure it. So let's see where we're at. We are, oh, we are, we are basically a quarter of an inch. And wait, you want, you want millimeters? I'll give that to you guys. I can, I can do that. Maybe. Centimeters, right? You want centimeters? One, two, three, four, I don't know. Six, six, five, six centimeters, right? Millimeters, millimeters. I know inches. What can I say? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the slab of clay. Now, I rolled out 13 pounds of clay. I went ahead and I cut my slab, my block of clay in half and rolled that out on my slab roller. And if you don't have a slab roller, you can of course roll out your slab by hand using a rolling pin. And then you can get a gorgeous big slab. You just roll it out. And I do have an intro to hand building class that's free on clayshare.com. And that right there will show you how to roll out a slab without a rolling pin. So the name of the one I'm going to be using right now is I believe the rosette pattern. Um, let me double check. Hold on, I can look. So this one is the rosette. Yep, this is the rosette. That's this one here. And that's the one I used on the demo. And that's the one we're gonna be using now. So we're gonna use the rosette. Mostly because I already opened it up. Let me grab it, hold on. I've got a pile of them over here, so. This one right here. This is the rosette. That's the one we're gonna use. We are gonna adjust the camera down. We're gonna go for, to the overhead camera in about three, two, one. So we're switching to overhead view so that all of you can see what I have here. All right, so here I have my clay slab that I've already rolled out and it's a quarter of an inch thick. And you can see because I rolled it out on canvas, I do have canvas texture on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth out my slab. So I'm just using this yellow rib. So this is by a company called Cheryl Mud Tools, which they would have been at Inseca, but they're not because there's no Inseca. <laughs> so you use a cake cutter with two wires to cut a slab. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. I think that's fabulous. So I'm just smoothing out both sides. And the great thing about rolling out a great big slab of clay is that I can make lots of things from it. I'm not limited to just one plate at a time. And I'm seeing a few people asking about my clay board. This is three quarter inch birch plywood that I'm working on. And it's had two coats of a water-based polyurethane applied to both sides. And of course you sand in between each coat and then you just reapply every three or four months. And it, it keeps it from delaminating and they're fabulous boards to use because they're inexpensive and you can get a lot of them out of a big sheet. So you can buy the, the wood by the sheet. You could use a metal rib. You mean the metal rib of death that always catches on everything and digs into your clay? Certainly. Um, you can use anything you want. I actually, before I had these ribs, I would use a drywall um, spatula. And they work great. So we have both sides smoothed out. And for these templates right here, Jeff at GR Pottery Forms has a suggestion of the sizes that you should use with them. And I was playing with them a little bit and I found that for the larger template, the best form is the 11 inch to use. I didn't need that one. I didn't need that one anyways gonna put that on the ground <laughs> all right and then for the smaller one you're gonna go ahead and use the uh, 8 inch sometimes things get dropped so someone was asking do I 
Do I go ahead and let it dry a little bit? I do, actually. I roll it out and I let it set about 20 minutes or so, so that, so that it will uh, stiffen up and not be too floppy, right? Did you do that too, Jeff? You dropped it too? Uh, you know, this is how it is. <laughs> so Jeff on Instagram, GR Pottery Forms, made these and made the forms. So my suggestion is this. If you're going to buy the template rims, the rim templates, buy the circle stacking form. Because say you want to make a nice deep bowl, you could stack two of them on and have a gorgeous deep bowl with this beautiful profile right here. So nice, right? All right, so we're going to go ahead and let me smooth out where I set that down. And I'm just going to cut out approximately what I need for clay. I'm just going to go a little bit bigger than the form there, than this rim template. It's going to go a little bit bigger because we're going to be draping this and we have to account for the depth of the form so that it'll fit. So now I can transition onto one of these wear boards. So Jeff has these as well. These are fabulous, great big boards, and they make it so easy to work on. I just love them. Jeff, you did great with these. I love them, by the way. You can't wait to buy them. I, they're beautiful. He has four really great shapes. I don't think you could go wrong with any of them. And I really loved playing with them. They were so fun. So someone's going to actually do their live video. Your first live kiln opening. I love kiln openings. They're so fun. So I want to add texture. And a lot of people don't know that you can put texture into your slab right now. We can add texture to the slab and it will stay. So if you look at the one I made already, do you see how we are? We have, look at how beautiful that texture is. You can see all this gorgeous, beautiful texture and it stays. I've, ha I've had people say, it won't stay. It stays. <laughs> it completely stays. So we're going to go ahead and roll this in the clay. And again, these slabs are about a quarter of an inch thick. So I rolled that out and I'm going to roll over here, lining up my edge and roll over here because, you know, the form, the, the little rim forms a little bigger than the rolling pin. Roll that through. There. So I have a slab of clay. Oh, we're giving away three of these, by the way. Three of these rolling pins. Right? Three. You get to pick your pattern. So that's happening on Wednesday. We're giving those away. So once I roll my texture and I want to release this again, and now we're going to set up the form. So we're going to set that slab to the side. And I happen to have another wear board. Now, you can use the ones that Jeff sells. You can buy these from Jeff. Um, you could also just make your own. Here's one I made from that birch plywood. And I just cut them into 12 inch squares. That's it. And so these make great wear boards and you can just use them um, over and over and over. So easy, right? So how do you keep the stacked forms from shifting if you get them wet? Let me just show a quick, we had a quick question. If you take your sponge and you wipe this down right here, and you put this one on, it'll actually, look, look at this. See how I'm able to move? They will actually, the water molecules will actually grab onto each other and it creates like a bit of friction seal. So it works. I don't know. Some science there, right? All right, so this is going to be the bottom layer, right? We're going to drape our clay. We have this piece which is the insert. Now, these can be used on Jeff's with the WAS system. And you can order these little um, inserts that have a little pin in it. And what I do is I set that down. I'm going to put my rim template on it first. Then I'm going to take my plate, clean it off because I made a mess with it. And there's a hole. You see? Hole goes through there. Hole goes through here. We line everything up, clicks on, so now it's in, and we're going to go ahead and drape our slab that we have off to the side. So we're just going to grab this, and you're just going to line it up so that it drapes down like that. It's draped. So this is basically making a drape mold. 
So if you want to, you could um, look up what drape molds are. This is what this is. It's a drape mold. So let me grab my ribs. So I have a, a couple other ribs I like to use. I like these little red ones. These are also from Cheryl Mud Tools. And I like the big yellow. So those are the ones that I, I really like to use. So we're going to smooth this out. And then for the sides, just going to lightly press a little bit. But now we're going to grab a banding wheel. Banding wheels are like Lazy Susans or turntables. They are a fabulous tool to use in your studio. Look how this spins. This is made by Shimpo. I love their banding wheels. They really make a good product. So now we can just turn it on the turntable. I'm going to take this rib and press it against the side. I'm not right here at the corner where the bottom meets the side. I'm just along the side. And you can see it start to start to shape. And Jeff sells these on grpotteryforms.com and I believe on claysharecon.com we have a link for a sponsor offer. So you can check that out there. You love GR Pottery Forms and the texture rollers. They, they, they pair together very well, don't they? It's like they were made for each other. So you just spin this and I mean really we're just shaping the clay to the form. That's it. It's simple. So we're just going to go along and you see I pull it out just a bit to the edge. It's so cool. It's, it's really a cool way to make a plate. You don't need a pottery wheel and the fabulous thing about these is they come out the same no matter how many you make. So each one's the same size. So if you want to make dinnerware or a set of plates, you can do it and get them to be all the same. All right, so let's go ahead and cut our rim. And what I'm going to use is a needle tool. So I've just got right here. And I'm going to come in until I connect to that rim because we're raised up, right? And I'm just going to follow this around just like this. can see the plate coming out, right? Look at that. So this is the profile of the plate. And you don't have to press very hard, no. When I'm smoothing this, I, this rib is very flexible. You see how flexible this rib is? It, it's very soft and you're just putting enough pressure on it for it to conform to the form. You're not trying to crush it. You're not trying to squash it, right? How strong is my pressing? Not very. Not very, and it might take a little practice to get it right, but it just gives you a chance to make more plates and more pieces to, to have to experiment with. So I want to put a foot on this, and I'm going to use my foot maker. Now, I, those of you on YouTube know I have a class on making a foot maker on there, and it's on Clayshare as well, and it's really simple. It's basically a corn cob holder right, that we filed down the edges and opened it up a little bit so that you'll be able to use it to cut a strip of clay. They're super easy. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my foot. So it's just a strip of clay that I'll be able to use on my plate. So we're just going to hold this. And this is that excess clay that I pulled off, that I cut off my rim. I think that's enough. Let's see, we'll keep going. And I don't, I don't really worry about it turning. I just let it turn because the foot is going to be round anyways, right? It's going to be round. So we'll cut this. My favorite knife for hand building is the Dolan 220S. I believe we're giving some of these away today too. We're giving away four packs of Dolan tools and each one of them has one of these knives in it. So we're giving four of those away today. Um, at three, so that's pretty exciting. Drop that too. <laughs> I drop everything all the time. I think it's a, a curse, right? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and slip and score the edge. I have a serrated rib. This is uh, Cheryl Mud Tools as well. Now Cheryl Mud Tools is not doing a giveaway or a sponsor, but 
They make fabulous tools and I like using them, so I do. So I keep using them. So I'm scoring and as I'm scoring, you might notice I'm dipping in my little bowl of slip over here. So that's putting slip on the serrations and allows me to score that and slip it at the same time. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Feet are not required. You do not need to put a foot on. If you want a flat bottomed plate, you certainly can make them flat bottomed. If you are concerned about stacking space in a cabinet, you might not want to put a foot on, right? You might want to leave a foot off and just have a flat bottom. There's nothing wrong with flat bottoms. So we're just going to line up where we scored the plate with the little foot ring. I'm going to scooch everything along. And we're going to have an overlap here. And I'm just going to cut through both the top and bottom so that I made a nice little beveled cut through my overlap right there. And if you want, if your clay is a little dry, you want to make sure you slip and score that join. And then we're just going to push it in together like that. How did I make the foot cutter? Well, I have a free class on YouTube you can watch. And it's also on clayshare.com. So it's really a core in the cob holder. Simple, simple. So now I'm going to take a damp sponge and I'm just going to turn it into a little taco, taco sponge. And then I'm going to wrap it around and just smooth everything. And as I'm doing this, I'm smoothing the sides, but I'm also pressing down a little bit. And you can take your, your finger and do this too. You'll hear air bubbles snap and pop out, and that's okay. So the form underneath is, um, is separate. So we have one of these forms, and then we have a rim. So it's two parts. Actually, there's three parts in the system. I'll show you the parts after we get done, those of you who have missed it. So we're going to smooth this out. I'm going to take my finger and smooth the inside seam and then the side of my finger and smooth the outside seam. And if you want to be part of the giveaway, all you have to do is sign up for emails on clayshare.com. That's it. You go there, sign up for my emails, and you're in. And once you sign up for, um, once you sign up for my emails, you are in for all our giveaways. That's pretty nice, right? Except my workshop, that's right. I do have a giveaway for one seat at my workshop September 24th, 25th, 26th in Norfolk, Virginia. And we are giving away a seat, but you have to pay your travel and accommodations. But I'll let you know, my workshops, last one I, the last one I had for this coming June sold out in seven minutes. So to get into my workshops, it's, a, it's sometimes a little difficult. So this is a fabulous prize. All right, so that's the bottom done, right? That's it. So you don't have any luck with the taco sponge. You know, you can just flat sponge. If you, if, you, if you can't get the taco sponge, just flat sponge. Hold it flat and then on each side. That's fine. You don't have to do the taco sponge. And the last little detail I like to do is using this color shaper, I'm going to compress and smooth that join. And that will make sure there's no cracking where the two pieces come together and it finishes it nicely. And I do want to add that Chiara Pottery Form sells the foot makers. They look like this if you get the one from Chiara Pottery Form. So if you're buying the rim templates and the forms and you don't want to make your own foot maker like I did here, you can buy one. You totally can buy them. It's entirely up to you. So once you make this, it has to dry a bit, right? Um, if you want to hang it, I would do something a little different with this. If I was going to hang this plate, I would actually cut a strip of clay and do a raised foot similar to, um, I can't get to the plate, it's hanging over there. Uh, you would just cut a strip of clay a little taller and make a taller foot that you can put two holes through and then add your wire is what I would do. Or if you want to hang it, you can make a little worm like this and you can attach them to the back, make sure you leave a little space, and I can do it more elegantly, but you can do that and hang it by that. Just make sure it doesn't stick out further than your foot. Okay, last thing you need to do is you want to make sure this is level, right? You want it to be level? I think so. The broken in sponge makes the better tacos. That's right. That's right. 
So to get everything leveled, what I do is I take a board and I just set it on and tap, 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 like that. And there we have it. So it'll be level. Now this has to sit up. Um, usually I cover it with plastic and let it set overnight. If I make it in the morning, I'll just let it set out in my studio for three, four hours, and then you can flip it out of the form. So I have one I did earlier, which I'm gonna grab, and this is the one I made last night. So I made this one, and all you have to do, so here it is, we can pick it up, we can turn it over, see the foot, you can see the side. I need to finish the rim. It's, it's a little, sharp. So what I do is I take a damp sponge and I just smooth that rim just like this. Now Jeff from JR Pottery Forms has this really cute little thing that you can use for your rims. I'm going to grab that out. Right here, which is basically one of these cut in half. And if you just take that it'll help round over your rim so it takes away that hard edge that you might have so there's no sharpness. Just like that. And then I like to go ahead and use a sponge just to finish it and soften it. So that's, that's it. The plate is made. You saw how easy that was and you could make a hundred of these. They'd be the exact same as far as size might have different design on the inside, but that's what you get. Pretty cool, right? Make a plate. So what do I do for edges without much pattern? So what you could do if you don't have a lot of pattern on your edges, you know, when you glaze it, that will fill that in a lot, but you could always go ahead and put a band of color around your edge if you wanted to get rid of the texture and you could smooth it out. But for here, you won't notice any difference in texture. So there's one plate with the GR Pottery Forms. Now let's make a tray and we're gonna use Sambao underglaze decals for this. So this one is really fun. And that's this right here that I made using their, this is a little simpler right here. This is one of these plaque forms that GR Pottery Forms makes. You can remove the template at this stage and leave it, the form inside. Uh, yes, yes, I can. Oh, I can take the template off. Mm. So if I flip it over and just let it dry face up, Jeff, see, we'll give it a go. Let's see what happens. I've got the master here with me. He knows, he made these, so. <laughs> I let mine dry overnight, usually with plastic on them, but let's see. Let's flip it over and see what happens. So this shows you what you have stacked. You have got the little insert with your pin, very important, no flipping, and then pull this off. And then just let it set like that. Or you remove it. Oh, I see what you're saying. You bab, that's a little unwieldy, isn't it? Let me flip it back over. Nope, it's staying. It was wet, it's staying. <laughs> so we're gonna let it set and um, go ahead with it. But you could take the template off and use it to make another one. So the form would stay in and the template would be um, able to be used for another one, right? Easy, fun to use and you get those same exact size plates every time. Super duper cute. All right, I'm gonna set this to the side and we're gonna move on and make our tray. And for that, I've got another piece of clay and it's a little, a little smaller. And this is gonna be a fun thing because we're gonna use underglaze decals. Yeah, this is BMX 5, it fires to cone 5. Exactly, that's exactly right. So let's see if this bit of clay is enough. Let's see, is this, is this big enough? I'm gonna check this. So I've got another board. Here's my slab. Oh yeah, we have enough room. We've got enough room so we can do this. And we're gonna have a little excess, so I'm just gonna trim off 
And all these scraps get wedged up and reused, so don't think at all that this is waste. This just all gets reused and we'll make something else with it. Okay. So we have the clay that I've already smoothed out. And we're just going to smooth it again. And I want to add a underglaze decal. So here's one of mine right here. And we're going to use uh, another design that I did from Sam Bao Studios. Mushrooms. So we're going to do a mushroom one because I want to. And I figure since I'm the one doing it, I, I get to pick, right? So I'm going to cut these decals. Oh, I should mention Sam Bao. Um, makes these underglaze decals, and they come in two sizes. So you have the smaller size, and then you have the large size. Look how big that is. It's huge. So you could do a great big platter that um, you could have a whole sheet. So someone's asked where my studio is. This is a barn, actually. I live in Vermont, and my studio is in a barn, and it's where I work. I work, I film classes out here, I make pots out here, and my house is next door. So it works out pretty well. And I, I, I'm getting used to that commute walking out the back door, um, you know, for about three minutes to get to the studio. <laughs> well, I've lived here for 14 years, so I think I'm used to it by now. All right, so this is my mushroom underglaze decal pattern. And we are gonna, you can use these up to cone 10. So these will go low fire up to cone 10. Just keep in mind, depending on what you use for a glaze, they might run a little bit. So I just want, want you all to be aware. So we're gonna lay this down on the clay and we wanna line them up so there'll be a little overlap. And, and I will cut the excess off and save. So if you get the smaller ones, you might have to use two sheets. If you get the bigger one, you can just go ahead and use those bigger ones. So let's press this in. I'm not adding water to this clay slab. I'm just smoothing it out, just like this. So easy. The transfers is San Bao Studios. Their website is China Clay Art. And if you order through them, um, I think we have a link to them from Clayshare Con. So let's line this up approximately about there. And then we'll just smooth this on. So that way we'll have a longer area that has the mushrooms on it. So to keep your bee mix from drying, this is what I do. Someone asked about wedging. I will, and I actually did a, a video on how to wedge your clay and how to reclaim. I ball them up, I dunk them in my bucket of water and I sit it on my plaster bat and then I'll wedge them throughout the day and put them in the bag again and reuse them. Yeah. Now the bee mix rehydrates really nicely and it's a great way to have no waste in your studio because you can easily wedge that up and use it to throw with or you can go ahead and use it to do slab building. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and peel off and you will see that middle area is lighter. So what I will do is I'll actually cut this and this, throw that used area away and save the other strips to use on another piece. And now we're gonna go ahead and peel off the second part, the top one. Take this off. We're gonna peel that off and I'm gonna go ahead and get the, let's see if I can get the live back up on Insta. There we go. So we just peel that off. Look how beautiful that is. It is gorgeous. And you cannot reuse these sheets. They are one and done. And then you can see I have this great big sheet, great big sheet of mushrooms. So you can make them as long as you need to. You can also make them wider. So if you needed to put a sheet on the side, you can line it up and you could go out wider from the side if you use the little ones. So that gives us a really cute pattern that will be the length of this form right here. So 
Instagram is back up, and just so everybody knows. I know that we stopped for a sec. So I'm going to line this up, and then I'm just going to flip the whole thing over onto a board. So I'm going to do a flip, just like that. You got the mushroom transfers from Sam Bao. Awesome. So we're just going to pull this off. You might have to reach under here, and what I'm doing is I'm actually grabbing the slab a little bit and making sure it's releasing as I lift it up because I want it to be lined up. So there's my slab. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the round plate. We're just going to smooth everything out. Smooth down the sides. So that conforms to the form. Right, if you draw, you can draw your own. Yes, you can make your own underglaze decals if you want to. I actually did a class on that. You can draw, you can slip trail them, you could go ahead and paint them with a brush. It's entirely up to you. So smoothing it out. I'm not trying to press here on the corner so much. I'm just really trying to get the side. Just like that. Smooth that out. All right, so the next, after we smooth it down, we're going to smooth up like this. And this is what really gives us a nice crisp edge right here. The smoothing up is the key. People always ask how I get a nice square, you know, nice angle on my plates and platters that I make using the rectangle and square forms. It's because I do this step right here. Smoothing out. And then because this is one of the plaque forms that's a, a little um, fancy, it has a little scallop. So we're going to go and highlight that. And of course, if you make your own decals, you can use underglaze, you can use slip, you can use either. Either one works. So as far as the boards go, you can use them without the polyurethane. Someone was just asking about these work boards. Um, but the polyurethane will let them last longer, which we all want our boards to last longer, don't we? So now we're going to finish the edge. I bet you didn't know. I bet you didn't know how we're going to finish the edge. I'm going to show you. This is that um, thickness strip, and it's one quarter inch thick, three quarters inch wide, and I'm just going to line it up on the edge, and I'm just going to cut just like that. And then we're going to save these strips. Now, the ones that have the underglaze transfer on it, you want to cut away. And I like to keep all of them, the blue ones, I'll wedge up together. And I'll have a little container for each different color underglaze, uh, transfer clay. And then I can use them to do marbled clay. So it's a great, a great way to recycle your clay that's been contaminated. My voice is trying to go. <laughs> Uh, many of you know I'm just getting over a cold, and the cold obviously doesn't want um, to go away. So we're just going to cut all the way around. And you will glaze over this, yes. So this is still wet and in the making stage, and we will let this dry, we will bisque fire it, and then we will glaze it. And I'm just going to do a little angle cut to just you know, make it a little fancier. That's all. There. So you can add a foot to this, but you don't have to. You don't have to at all. Um, you can go ahead and leave it flat, or this one here, I added a foot to. Oh, look how sweet. That right there. I don't know if the camera will actually decide to focus on it. <laughs> Maybe not. It's my name with the little. So, I mean, you can go ahead and put a foot on it. Don't put a foot on it. It's entirely up to you. We could leave this footless. Um, it looks like a ravioli, someone suggested. It, it kind of does, doesn't it? It kind of has a ravo ravioli-ness to it. I can see my cut needed to be redone. Um, the thing is, if you don't put a foot, you know you can flip it out right away. 
If there's no foot, you can turn it over. If there's a foot, you need to let it set up because what will happen is when you remove the form, the bottom will sag. So let's not put a foot on this and let's flip it over. And then we'll talk about how to dry them so they don't warp because that is a huge question I get asked all the time. And then we're going to quickly um, use some sand bow rollers and some clay and show you those new textures of theirs. So we are going to pop this right out. Just like that. So there you have it. A little mushroom tray. You can see it from the side, from the front. Cute. Super cute. So how do you keep them from warping? And that is the number one thing, right? We don't want any warping. What I will do is I will let this sit in the studio until it's stiff enough so the sides won't collapse. So usually later the same day or the next day, always covering with plastic. So this one sat out overnight, covered with plastic. And I'm going to go ahead and smooth my edges. just with the sponge to finish it. Now if you wanted to, you could take black underglaze and you could paint it on here to really finish this edge. That's entirely up to you. And then I will put plastic on it and then I'll use these weight bags. So this is just an old shirt sleeve, right? That's all, that's it, just a shirt sleeve that I filled with kitty litter, but you could fill it with rice or sand or anything you want. And you can tell this is definitely a shirt sleeve. You see, I cut the long sleeve off, tied one end in a knot, filled it full of kitty litter, tied the other end in a knot, and look at this, right? So if I don't put a foot on it, I don't glaze the bottom exactly, right? Because if you um, will, just for simplicity's sake, we'll say don't glaze your bottoms if you don't have a foot, right? And you don't have to because we're going to fire this to vitrification. We're going to fire this to cone five. You don't need to glaze the bottom. And so this will sit like this until it's completely dry. And what's happening is the weight is going to keep the plate from trying to bow up or warp. And that's it. It's basically ready for this firing once it's completely dry. And you can put it through. So I want to take a second because we're getting close to time. We've got about 10 minutes until we stop. So I've got, I'm going to have time to make a quick little plate. Let's see, I've got, I've got some more clay here. I want to try out the new Sambao rolling pins. So we are going to give away five packs of underglaze transfers and five rolling pins. These are their new textures. So we're going to give away these small rollers from Sambao right here. Look at how cute these are. I love these. So we're going to roll them in clay so you can see them. And I might not make anything with them, um, or maybe I will. I need, a t I, need a, I need a template, though. Can you get me one of my small squares over there? And I'm going to grab another piece of clay. GR pottery form. Yeah, we're going to use a GR pottery form to do that. And I'm grabbing another, I'm going to grab another, I'm going to grab a fresh piece of clay. We've got time. We can do it. We can make it happen. Um, give me a couple, well, yeah. Get a couple squares going. All right. So here is fresh clay. Let me just cut this to fit. And let's use these rollers. We're going to do this really fast. So my boards are plywood. Everybody loves my boards. They've asked. I've mentioned it a few times what they are. And um, you can go back and check the replay. So let's smooth this out because this, again, has the canvas in it. I love the GR Pottery forms for just about everything you can imagine. So we're going to smooth this out, both sides. So this is very similar to what I would do if I was using one of my larger rolling pins. But Sambao has these new little minis. They're cute and little. How cute they are. And I am going to go ahead and roll them. Someone was asking, I do use a slab roller. Yes. The amount of clay I use in my studio, um, the amount of clay I roll in a day, I definitely use a slab roller. So let's go ahead and start with this one. This is the, the honeycomb pattern right here. 
and ooh, I'm bringing you all in super close because I want you to see it. So those of you watching on YouTube, you get to see it really close. So let's roll like this. Ooh, look at that honeycomb pattern. And then we have butterflies. I'm going to do butterflies and leaves, kind of an abstract leaf pattern. And then we have uh, another leaf pattern over here. I'm just making like a mosaic. And then we have the stone one. So you can see all five stone. We have a leaf that's stone in the leaf, honeycomb, uh, sort of another leaf, and then that's the butterflies. So cute, right? The honeycomb is really, really cute, but you can use these to create more of a mosaic pattern and they can overlap each other. They can stop and be little squares or just a strip of each design. Or if you just want to use one design and just keep rolling it out, you could do a whole sheet of it. And that's entirely up to whatever you want. So we're going to make a little plate. And I think it would be really fun to make a plate right in here. We're going to take that there. So we're going to cut and set this to the side. Put that up there. And then we'll just drape this over. So this is basically the same thing as we did when we made the one using the underglaze decal. Exactly the same. Smoothing it down. And remember that smoothing back is the key to get a really crisp edge when you're doing square forms. So if someone has a question on YouTube, they've been trying to sign up for the emails and they're getting an error error code and they're in Canada. That shouldn't make a difference. We send emails to people all across the world. Is um, there a problem? The one thing that I'm seeing, people are trying to sign up for our emails on ClayShare.com. That site is erroring because it's feed, it, it's working so hard feeding the video. Okay. So if you bounce over to ClayShareCon, Okay, com. go to SlayShareCon. all of them there, and we're not feeding video on that site, so it shouldn't have any problems. Good to know. Okay, so go to ClayShareCon, the page for this event, instead right now, right? So visitors to my, my studio is private because I do film in here. Um, I do do open studio weekend events, and I let everybody know when those are happening, and people are welcome to come, and... If uh, you know you're going to be in the area and I am free and I can arrange it, I try to make it so people can come to my studio. But uh, mostly it's private just because uh, I could be filming a class and someone walk right in the studio. And um, it's happened. <laughs> it has actually happened. But I do open studio events and I post those. My next one will be this autumn. So you can come to the studio in the autumn, which is the best time to come to Vermont anyways and see everything. So we have a little plate and we don't have to put a foot on this if we don't want to. We can flip it over right now. Smaller plates, you can really get away with this. The butterflies and the honeycombs are cute, aren't they? Does it somewhat remove the pattern on the inside? It depends how hard you press. The harder you press, the more of the pattern you might remove. So let's just pop this out. And if you look, you can see we haven't lost any, none of the pattern. It's all still there. There isn't any of the texture lost at all. So it's all there. And for finishing this, I will just wait till it dries and I'll smooth my edges just like I would do for the larger one. It's the same exact thing. So we still have a tiny bit of clay left. We've got another little piece of clay. I, I say let's make one more quick, make one more quick thing. One more quick teeny weeny thing, right? Because because we've got we've got clay. Why not? So if you roll out your rolling pin and you don't like the pattern, guess what you can do? Ha, you can just smooth it away, right? You can just smooth it away and start over. Now I actually like that pattern, but I wanted to show an example. <laughs> so we'll smooth this all out. And I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do honeycomb this way. I'm going to get tricky. I'm going to get tricky. And I'm going to turn it. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to roll butterflies right up against the edge there. Look at that. So 
see how you can roll in multiple directions with these little rollers? That's pretty cool. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead. I have got this little guy. Now tomorrow we're gonna make some pressed dishes and we're gonna do scraffito carving. So tomorrow we're doing some surface and some making. And later today at two, I'm gonna be doing glazing with pigments and Georgie's glazes to bring out texture. So that's gonna be at two o'clock. And then at three o'clock we have the giveaway drawing for today. So we'll smooth this out. So you want to mark your calendars and if you need to see the full schedule, if you go to claysharecon.com, we've put the schedule up there. How many will win? We have 86 prizes for the whole five days. And these yellow ribs are made by Cheryl Mud Tools and they're sold at clay suppliers that carry Cheryl products. Um, you can get it at clayscapespottery.com and I believe they're doing a discount on the mud tools, aren't they? I think they've got a sale on them. So check it out. If you go to claysharecon.com, we have sponsor offers on there and you can just click through and see. It's such a fun texture. When I hold it up, the camera does not focus. Good to know. So I'm not going to hold stuff up anymore. <laughs> And actually, we're giving away four of these aprons. People were asking about my apron. And you can actually win these. This is a separate giveaway. April 1st, we'll be giving away the aprons. And you can pick whatever design you want. And if you can't wait to win, you can go to claysharemarket.com and check out the aprons there. So here we pop the little form out. And there it is. There's our little plate. Just like that. So cute, right? So this is this little guy. And we didn't put a, feet on it e a foot on it either, and I would still weigh these down. Even though they're tiny, I would still weigh them. So how would I use a roller on the thrown pot? Arlene, I would put a support inside that thrown pot and roll this on the outside. So whether you put a cardboard cylinder, but you'll have to have some kind of a, a two layers of paper for release, or you could put it on a bisque hump mold that you could roll around. So you can use them on um, thrown pieces and actually I've been thinking of doing a class for that because I've had so many people ask me how to do it. All right, so here we have it. That's it. We made this plate with GR pottery forms and we made the tray using Sambao underglaze decals. We actually made two trays, right? We got two trays going. We got cute blue mushrooms and we've got my Scandi birds pattern, the, the black design. And um, we've got the little square plates. So that's what we did. And so I think we can, you know, pull out, zoom out and I can say au revoir. You love the mug. This is my farmhouse chicken mug. So we can, you know, go to full frame. We're going. So it takes a minute for everything to switch. And right here. Farmhouse chicken mug. Everybody loves it. This is a class I did on ClayShare. So how do you win? You sign up for emails on ClayShare.com. But if you go to ClayShareCon.com, I know it's confusing, all these ClayShare websites, but if you go there, you can sign up. All right, so any way to know how many people are watching, uh, someone wants to know. We're well over 1,000 right now. Over a thousand. Well, there's usually more than a thousand. So we will we will see if we can get analytics for you all, and see because we have 300 and something people there right now and at one, and we're on five different channels. So there's a lot going on. We are live broadcasting on. Um, so let's see. You've been making very thin textures, wrap for your mugs. We'll soon fire. I, I missed the comment, so you can always message me. All right. So thank you everybody for the very first ClayShare Con demo using the GR Pottery Forms new rim templates. And that's what we made this super cute plate with, right? This cutie right here. And we're giving away three of those at three o'clock today so you can win the templates. And we're giving away the Georgie's Interactive Glaze Kits, four packs of Dolan tools, and these five, these rollers. The rollers I have rolled in clay, the rollers I've rolled in clay, you're going to win because Sandbow only sent me 
one of each design. He doesn't have any more. And I'm going to mail them to you along with, I've got a big pack. I got to divide this up for five people. So I'll be dividing this giant pouch. Look at all, look at all the underglazed decals. Oh my gosh, there's so many in here. And these are the big ones. So I'll be dividing these up. Look at that. Ooh. So I'll be dividing this up into five equal portions so that whoever wins the sandbow prize, everybody will get a rolling pin. And yes, you'll have clay on it. I'm sorry. And you'll have a few underglazed decals to sample. All right. So there you go. I'm going to reset everything. I'll be back at two because we're going to be glazing with Georgie's Interactive Pigments, talking about ways to highlight your texture and lots of good glaze combos. So that's next. All right, everybody. I'll see you all later. Bye.